Town councils have the power to take money, council tax, from those living in their areas and spend it for the benefit of those they take the money from, the town's residents. The quality of these councils can vary from the very good to the abysmal, so there are rules councillors have to follow to ensure that taxpayers get good value for money. Occasionally, the expenditure can be quite significant, an example of this being the recent refurbishment of the toilets behind the town hall, the cost being about £40,000. The procedure in a case like this is that a specification is prepared, invitations to quote for the work are issued to contractors with a deadline set by which time the quotes should be received in a sealed envelope. The sealed envelopes should then be opened in a meeting and the contents of the quotes discussed by the council, with the contract being given to the contractor giving the best quote. So, what's the specification? It's a detailed description of the work being quoted for. It will carefully describe the work required and will be the basis on which the contract will be awarded. Once awarded, the contractor will be obliged to complete the work specified for the price quoted. If the council then asks the contractor to do additional work, the contractor will be entitled to charge extra for that work. But that work is usually charged at a higher rate than you would get in the work quoted for. Mistakes made in the specification will cost the council and the council taxpayer dearly, so it's important to get that right. And doing that may involve getting professional help, for example from an architect. When the Lloyd's Town Council decided to refurbish the toilets in 2018, the process was started properly and it was agreed to commission an architect to create the specification. There was nothing difficult or unusual about the work. Most of the local builders could do it. But things moved slowly and in June 2020 started to go badly wrong. In the council meeting of that month, held as a Zoom meeting because of Covid, the fifth item on the agenda read to discuss refurbishment of the public toilets at the rear of the town hall and to minute the council are happy to go ahead with one quotation as this is a specialised contract and to consider the attached quotation from Healthmatic. Let me be clear, no specification had been prepared for the council that could be given to contractors and we should have got at least three quotes for the work or put the contract out to tender. There was nothing specialised about the work. It turned out that the Mayor, Janet Crisp and the clerk, Sonia Pritchard, had met a representative of one company, Healthmatic, and agreed a specification and price without consulting the Council. This was being presented to the Council for approval. Thirteen councillors approved the proposal to award the contract to the Healthmatic. One rejected it. That one was me. The problem for Chris and Pritchard was that they knew I wouldn't hesitate to report the malpractice to the appropriate authority. The appropriate authority being someone we know as the monitoring officer. The monitoring officer is someone appointed to oversee the functioning of local government to ensure that proper practices are followed. And if they're not, investigate and report the problem to a higher authority, for example the Ombudsman or Audit Wales. For the Nidloys Town Council, the monitoring officer is the County Solicitor at Powers County Council. On a previous occasion, I had sent a Town Council problem to the monitoring officer, and anyone on the Council who broke the rules could be sure that this far more serious problem would go to the same place, if the contract was awarded to Healthmatic. We heard nothing more about Healthmatic, but our next meeting on the 27th of July, the Council found that two other contractors had been invited to bid. One company didn't, the other did, so in theory we'd asked for three quotes. This time I went along with it and agreed the contract be awarded to a local builder, even though I knew proper procedures hadn't been followed. There were problems with the specification that needed looking at, but if I just carried on objecting to everything, I'd probably be ignored, and that would cost the taxpayer money. If I agreed to the contract, 
I might be able to fix the problems with the specification. So I did that, but I also contacted the monitoring officer that same day. He should have put everything on hold before any contract was awarded. That didn't happen, and the contract went ahead. Why was nothing done about the malpractice? I don't know. All I can tell you is that I followed up my complaint to the monitoring officer on the 25th of August with an email, but there was no reply to that either. After trying other ways of dealing with the problem, on the 16th of March 2022, I sent a complaint about the Town Council to Audit Wales, the Welsh Government body responsible for ensuring councils follow the rules. All the paperwork needed to support my claims were sent in several emails. A year and a half later, no response has been received. I also sent a complaint about this to the Ombudsman's Office. All my complaints have been ignored, and the people of Llanidloes lost out because of that. As a last resort, and because of continuing malpractice by a minority of town councillors, I have now emailed the Head of Wales Audit, Adrian Crompton. I'm not interested in a response from him or anyone else at Audit Wales, because now there's only one way I can be sure the problems on the Town Council are exposed. The best thing for me to do is concentrate on getting the story of the biggest legal scandal in British history out, and preparing Campaign for Democracy for the attention it will get when that happens. This video will be left on this website. When the story of the legal scandal comes out, the abysmal way in which Clinton Town Council has been run will also be exposed.